Ratio analysis. A way to avoid the problems associated with comparing companies of two different sizes is to use financial ratios. Such financial ratios are ways of comparing the relationship between two or more financial items. It is important to note that many analysts calculate and title ratios differently, so if you are using ratios to analyze a statement, it is important to document how each ratio is calculated, and if you are comparing your ratios to someone else's, it is important to know how their ratios were calculated. When calculating ratios, several questions should be asked. How is a ratio calculated? What is the intended purpose of the financial ratio? What is the unit that the ratio is measuring? What is a high or low value telling us? How can these values be misleading? How could we improve on this measure? Financial ratios are usually grouped into the following categories. Short-term solvency, or liquidity. Long-term solvency, for financial leverage. Asset management, or turnover. Profitability, and market value. Short-term solvency or liquidity measures. These ratios are used to measure a company's short-term liquidity. The main concern is the company's ability to pay its bills in the short run without any undue stress. For obvious reasons, liquidity ratios are of special interest to short-term creditors. An advantage to looking at short-term items is that their market values and book values are likely to be similar. This is because their lives are not long enough to become too mispriced. The current ratio. The current ratio is one of the most commonly used ratios. It is calculated as current assets divided by current liabilities. In our example, on the balance sheet, you can see that we have $653,000 in current assets and $552,000 in current liabilities. Since current assets and current liabilities are converted to cash over the next 12 months, the current ratio is a measure of short-term solvency. It is measured neither times or in dollars. In our example, we have $1.18 in current assets for every dollar in current liabilities. Or, we could also say that we have 1.18 times as many current assets as we have in current liabilities. To creditors, the higher the current ratio, the less risky it would be to lend money. A high current ratio can indicate liquidity, but it can also indicate that a company is not efficiently using its assets and other short-term assets. If a company's current ratio is less than 1, then this would mean that they have negative networking capital. This would be an unusually unhealthy sign. The current ratio can be affected by many different types of transactions. Suppose a company took out a long-term loan. Its cash would go up and its long-term liabilities would go up. Its current liabilities would not be affected, and therefore its current ratio would increase. If a company has unused borrowing potential, then a low current ratio may not always be all that bad. The quick ratio, or acid test. The quick ratio is similar to the current ratio, except it excludes inventory. This is because inventory is not as liquid as other items such as cash. The purpose of the quick ratio is to measure whether or not a company could pay off its current liabilities if they were to come due today. The quick ratio is calculated as current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. The cash ratio. The cash ratio is an even more conservative ratio than the quick ratio and it measures cash over current liabilities. A short-term creditor may be extremely interested in this ratio.